Breaking news, there's new Sony and Nikon firmware. I'm gonna show you how it works. Olympus took a $420 million loss. There's new Olympus and Pentax cameras, and one of them is truly shocking to see. But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes websites. You can go to squarespace.com slash Tony, set up a website totally free and try it out. Set up a store to sell your product. Set up a client area where only they can see their pictures. Set up something to schedule appointments. Whatever you need, you can put it online in just a few minutes. Give it a shot, nothing to lose. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. And if you love it, use the coupon code Tony and get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. First, Nikon released new firmware updates for the Nikon Z6 and Z7 Mark II, not the first generation, the second generation versions. They added some new video capabilities to the Z6 Mark II, and perhaps more importantly, they improved the human eye autofocus on both of those cameras. We tested it out briefly and I didn't see any like big difference. And unfortunately the firmware notes don't make it clear precisely what to expect, but we are planning to do a full roundup of eye autofocus systems in the near future. So subscribe to see that because we will include the Nikons. Sony also issued a firmware update for the A7S Mark III. This is their video centric full frame camera and it's what we use to film everything that's not in the studio. So this is filmed on a Canon RP, but when we're out vlogging, we're filming with the A7S III and I'm actually excited about this firmware update because it adds the S Cinetone profile, which provides just like a little bit better skin tones. And a lot of real filmmakers swear by this particular profile for proper films. But unlike so many uh, log formats that require heavy grading, you can use this straight out of the camera. So that makes it really appealing for somebody like me who has a really quick workflow. I got to film, edit and publish often in just a few hours. So I'm going to be trying that out, but let's also try it out right now. This is the Sony a7S III with the standard profile. In other words, S Cinetone is off. This is what we normally film with. This is with S Cinetone on. We should see a little more detail in bright highlights like this light bulb and my hair and maybe my shirt. I also want to take a second to rant because Sony has the worst firmware update process, not just of any camera company, but of any device I have ever used, ever. Most devices just connect over the internet, they phone home, they find a firmware update, and then they say, hey, is it okay to install this? And then they automatically install it. Most cameras don't do that. Like the old Samsung cameras did it. It was possible. Nowadays, with cameras, you typically have to take your memory card, put it into some device, copy the firmware update to the memory card, and then move it to the camera, and then install it from the camera. It's a manual process, but it works. It's not the case with Sony cameras. With Sony cameras, you have to install an app on your Mac or PC. That app requires administrative privileges and then you have to connect the camera through a particular USB cable. They don't all work and run the update which seems to take like 10 or 15 minutes when it works. But I wasted more than an hour today trying to get this firmware installed. I went through all these processes. First I go to install it on my Mac and it tells me that it has to install an extension and that actually has to bypass the security and privacy system preferences. So I have to go in that and then I have to reboot the entire computer. And then the dialogue pops up and it's half in English and half in Japanese because like the developers haven't figured out how to make the UE work for different default languages. And you connect it with the USB and then it tells you to disconnect it and then you have to reconnect it and then it sees the camera and then it just starts the update and then mm, just nothing. It just straight up fails because you couldn't update. And I did this over and over again. And then I realized that this update does not work with the latest version of Mac OS, which has been available to developers since June, I think, and which was pushed out to just about every Mac in the world in November. And it, it doesn't work with it. And the app itself, when it installs, doesn't detect. Oh, uh, that was like 20 minutes ago. My microphone died and now I have to re-record it. Why is it if your car is running out of gas, you get blinking lights and warning stuff all over the place, but you're using a microphone to record yourself in a studio all alone and it runs out of batteries and it's just like, shh, don't tell Tony. We wouldn't want to disturb him. He's recording something. Anyway, Sony firmware updates suck. In other news, Olympus sold off their camera division and we see the results of that now in their latest financial report. They wrote off 44 
0.7 billion yen, which is about $421 million US. It's a little weird to transfer off a division and lose that much money because theoretically the company taking it over would be paying you the value of that. So you'd think it would be close to a net zero on the books. But um, ultimately, they just had to take that loss because it's actually very difficult to scale down a division in Japan. Um, that transfer allows JIP to simply not pick up a lot of employees, which is sort of the easiest way to do mass layoffs in Japan. Olympus stock is up 16% over the year, and I thought that was good. But then I looked overall at the stock indexes, and the Dow is up 16%, and NASDAQ is up 47%. So it doesn't seem like cutting that division really moved the needle one way or the other. The good news is that JIP has repeatedly committed to the Micro Four Thirds platform that specifically talked about the new Pro 150 to 400 f4.5 lens, which seems to be really high in demand by existing Micro Four Thirds users. Unfortunately, it's not shipping in the quantities that people hoped. The company says that they are currently limited by their manufacturing ability. So as part of that transfer, they didn't take over all of Olympus's manufacturing facilities or staff. And particularly with this new high-end camera, they're sort of limited by the number of the complex optical elements that they can make. And thus they're churning them out as fast as they can, but they don't have any plans to ramp up production. They're at max capacity and that's the rate they're gonna produce them. They will eventually catch up with demand, they say. So place your orders and when it ships, it will ship. It's worth noting that this was actually announced in January 2019. A lot of people have been clamoring for this for more than two years. So I understand people feeling a little impatient about it. Other good Olympus news is that JIP says that they are planning a new Olympus flagship camera. So maybe it's a new version of their flagship EM1. I thought to myself, what could possibly be new about it? And in their statement translated from Japanese, they say that they plan to improve the autofocus and offer new and more and better artificial intelligence, basically how it's selecting which subject to focus on. It has kind of a novel system where you could pick from like people or birds or trains even. So maybe they'll expand that to a few more subjects. I also think it's possible that they might offer a higher megapixel version of the camera. Sony, for a couple of years now, has uh, had available a digital camera sensor, Micro Four Thirds sized at 47 megapixels. It would make about a 41 megapixel image in cropped 4.3 mode. This is the aspect ratio that Micro Four Thirds uses. This sensor is actually capable of 8K video. So people saw this and were like, okay, this is what's going into the Panasonic GH6 and maybe the new Olympus EM1. And it's been a while now and we're still kind of waiting for it, but I still expect some Micro Four Thirds camera to use this and really take advantage of like those pro optics and the lens that we were just talking about because right now they're all limited in like 20 to 24 megapixels of, of resolution max and that's not keeping up with the latest high megapixel full frame cameras. Now a warning to our more sensitive viewers, the images you're about to see will be disturbing to many. So it might be best to click away. Ah! This is the new Pentax camera. As if Pentax users have not suffered enough, Pentax is launching a limited version of this camera. Thankfully, it's only being released in Japan, but still, the people of Japan deserve better than this. This is the worst thing to happen since Godzilla. You can get this in several different colors, but the red is my least favorite. I actually like red cameras, but they combined the red with a brass lens mount and some brass lettering as well as some black lettering and some white lettering there. They have dimpled rubber on the front taken from an aftermarket steering wheel cover. Every texture of rubber and plastic that you can imagine has been included. The strap mounts and the hot shoe are silver, however, because the color scheme was apparently not complex enough. To finish it off, they found a 2001 Lexus from a junkyard and took out the dark polished wood to put that piece in the handle. While most cameras make some effort to conceal their screws, Pentax has just stuck the screws directly on the outside like a Jeep Wrangler. They, for some reason, painted this panel red, but this panel black. And all of the screws are black, even when they're attached to the red panels. This is a travesty 
of design. And the one thing that consoles me is I know that my home country of the United States would never make anything quite so ugly. <laughs> oh God, it's happening here too. What is happening? When did we stop caring about aesthetics? Well, if you do care about design, but maybe you don't have a hand for creating it yourself, try out Squarespace. They make websites that are designed by professional designers. They have amazing color schemes that you can fine tune to your own sense of style. So you'll pick one of their many beautiful templates and then you can put your pictures in, write a little bit of text about yourself, put in a store, take calendar appointments online and you can have it all up and ready in just a few minutes. And you don't have to trust me. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony, try it out for free. And then if you love it, use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace, and thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to subscribe because we have a couple of really cool reviews and tutorials coming up soon. The weather's getting nicer, so we'll be getting out more. Bye.